it's obviously a troubled case. And, you know, you, you had similar issues in your past. Have you, have you reached out to Matt Harvey? Has he reached out to you? And what do you think of the whole uh, Harvey hey, situation? Yeah, it's a tough thing. I, I like Matt as a person, number one. Um, I always like Matt. And when he came on the scene, I was one of the big fans of Matt watching him. And, and um, although Matt will always be a, a friend of mine, I haven't talked to him recently. I have reached out to him several times prior to that being announced. It had no luck. Um, and, I, and I get it. I get it. Um, hopefully it all works out for him personally as a person, number one. And the ball player stuff, you know, that's, that's, that's secondary to me. Um, but, you know, he still have a life to live. And Matt's not a bad person, I don't think. Um, sometimes we make bad choices. And then the choice we make, they become, you know, addicted. I know, especially in my case, that's what happened. Um, so I just wish him the best as a person, number one. And number two, yes, the Mets did ask me to reach out to him a couple of years ago. Um, I did to some friends at the time. I didn't have his number. He refused, which, I, like I said, I get it. When you're going through things like that, you think you got it under control and you're in a good place. But, you know, you can't do this stuff by yourself. And it took a long time for me to learn that and accept that because sometimes, especially as athletes, our ego get in the way. Mm-hmm. And that's what stopped me for a long time. I asked for the help I needed and really reaching out. Um, so I would say, hopefully, He's okay now. He's in a good place, and everything's getting better for him. And secondly, I still like him, you know, cook. He don't want his career. That's what he wants to do. But you got to think of himself first. Yeah, one of, one of the things about you, Doc, that has always been so impressive is the humility, the, the, the fact that you are – a regular guy we're down in fantasy camp and everybody's coming up to you for a picture and autograph. I've never seen you say no. You're very open and honest with the trials and tribulations of your career. You know, a lot of guys always want the pat on the back for all the good things that they've done. The struggles that you went through and came back from, I mean, those are life lessons that I constantly, um, if there's ever anyone that that's going through something like that, I, I you're the first thing I, the first person I think of to reach out to. Um, one thing that, it, it doesn't bother me. Like it's, it's amazing to hear you say, it. like you understand, like you think you had it under control. You think you had, you know, you, you didn't have a problem. Um, even though people were kind of trying to say it without saying it, like, Hey, reach out. This guy's going to call you. This guy's going to call you. So we talked about this before. If, you know, you could go back in time and tell yourself a, a message or two that would have kind of shaken you up or woke you up. And we had that great interview, like, for Matt Harvey to not be able to even just take the phone call. It's such a disappointing thing because it's also like with his pitching, we we knew there was something wrong with him mechanically, physically, whatever it was, but they always kept, you know, trying to spin it so that he was always being seen in that good light and could never get back out of the shadows. It's such a tragic tale that I, I just know that you being involved more with this organization things like this would happen less and less and less. And I'm, I, I know that that's something that kind of would probably keep you up at night when you think about it, that it, could you have been the one to reach out to him and get through to him? Oh, without a doubt, because I told him it's nothing that Matt has done and haven't done that I haven't been through. And I, I sent a message to him. I mean, I've been released. I've been traded. I've been, you know, I had a problem with drugs. I mean, all these things. I've, I've been on the top of the mountain. I've been on the bottom. I mean, everything that he's been through, I've done that. So obviously, all I've been doing is sharing my experience with him and hopefully something clicks. And the same thing, if I'm working with these guys, it, it's nobody's business, whatever we talk about, I would just share my experience and, and give my advice and then let them go from there because someone did that for me. And that's why I'm still here today. I mean, I've done stuff that a lot of guys have lost their life for, but I'm still here. I'm here for a reason. And so the rest of the time that I do have here, I like to reach out and help and just carry the message. And the mess that I made turned into a message. That's what I try to do. And I would love to give that back to the organization or anybody that's in search of that because, and at the same time, it would keep me going by constantly sharing my past. It's that reminder to keep me going. 